There's a funeral scene at the end of the film, towards the end of the film, and it's the first time that there is a, a mass gathering of, uh, well, they're extras, but of people. You know, it's a very uninhabited town all the way through the film. Suddenly, there are 12 rows of pews in a church, and we've shot it so that they're looking straight at the cinema audience, and you don't want to hit people over the head with it, but that's what it's about, really. It's an opportunity for us all to look at ourselves at a certain moment in time, and there are various contact points, depending on who you are, whether you're a son or a mother or a daughter or a father or a 15-year-old who hasn't had sex and is about to, or a 12-year-old that's worried about the size of his genitalia, or um, a 65-year-old who can see death nearer and more closely than anybody else, maybe. Can you? Well, I know you can, but I mean, will you tell me what the, what or who the winter guest is? Well, you, it's that really. It's that um, that um, person that's beckoning you towards the horizon, I suppose. Um, you could say that it's um, death, or you know, how you're going to live your life, and uh, the, the t there is a telescope in the film uh, that endlessly kind of focuses itself on. Um, details. There is um, Emma Thompson's character as a photographer. She picks up a camera and focuses it. Um, it. It's it's a certain horizon in everybody's life that uh, they've either, they're either either at or walking towards, I suppose. And there's a sense also I I felt in the script that you know when you know if we just say that the winter guest is that old man with a sickle, mm. um, that he doesn't necessarily come for people in a predictable order, and that, it, it, with the old phrase, in the, in the midst of life. At any time, yes. And, um, and not always uh, a gloomy thing. Do you think the film has subtly changed or deliberately altered any, uh, anything in the play? Are, are, are they the same piece, essentially? Yes, in a way. Um, Shaman's writing is so particular. It's such a particular voice that it would, it'll, that will always give it its character. Um, and uh, the debates within it are the same, really. The issues, what's at stake, and the passions, the humour, those things are the same. The fact that it's 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 breathing on a bigger scale now, and it's got real air in it blowing through it, and um, and that you're able to let it travel beyond certain confines, just to, it just gives it wings, I suppose. And people who saw the play talked about how filmic it was. So I suppose it was just part of its natural development that it would take off and become a movie. Has that experience left you with an appetite to make more films, or do you regard this as a sort of an act of loyalty to, 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 a, to a friend and a favourite piece of writing? Both, I think. It, it felt like something that was inevitable and has done for a while. Um, it's like pulling together all sorts of threads from past training and interests and work. Um, but I, I think I could only ever dare to direct something that I have got a very um, instinctive and internal relationship to. I don't, I don't know that I'll be kind of flipping through the pile saying, oh, well, okay, well, let's do this one this month and that one in a year's time. Lethal Weapon 6 is not, hasn't got Alan Rickman's name on it. I'm not clever enough to do one of those. I mean, I know what that entails. Um, and they're incredibly hard, you know. I was fortunate. This one, I trained as a graphic designer before, as an actor, and so this, this film allows me to use that area of myself. The, the shots are very carefully composed. 
the film has a particular rhythm that I can deal with. But anything like Lethal Weapon 6, which requires real skill with a camera and special effects and, and, uh, and a storyboard, um, I think I would know when to say no, I don't think so. Are you, are you at your happiness at the, uh, in, in this directing experience at that period where you actually have the actors with you? I mean, there's the pre-production period and then there's the filming period and then there's all, all, all this post stuff. But is it as an actor when you're sort of interacting with the others on location where, where for you the film lives? I th I th no, I think it lives at every moment of its existence. You just just a different bit of yourself. In some ways, the time when you're with the actors can be the most frustrating because you know the level of the compromises that are being made, um, and you know where the whips are out and the, you know hurry up, hurry up is going on, and you also know the cost in terms of the acting process. You also know when, if we just had another half an hour, I know we'd get it, but we can't. We've got to move on. That must be very painful. It is, because you can see it in rushes, and you can see it all the way through cutting, and you know it at the time. You know this is going to always be difficult now, because we didn't get the scene. And it's a mysterious process. You know, I, I mean, even as an actor, it's always something where the entire crew recognises when you've got it, and it's time to, OK, we can move on. We got that scene. I'm not sure that you could ever write it in words what that got it um, quality is, but you certainly know when you didn't, and, uh, and then you know that you're in compromise land to some extent. With all that you know now about uh, making a film, which obviously first hand must be more than you observed as an actor, going back to acting in somebody else's film, is that going to have changed? because of what you know and are not using? Um, well, I hope it will make me more tolerant. But you never know. You know. Every circumstance is different, and I think actors spend a lot of their lives with boxing gloves on, not necessarily attacking, but defending. And um, I don't know, every circumstance is different. I'm sure I won't... Uh, interfere as much because <laughs> I'll know how many other threads are passing through the director's brain as the actor is talking to them. You think you have their their attention, but but not always. Not always. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much indeed. Okay.